Hi everybody, Yale Keown here, email marketing expert. And today is all about lists, segments and tags. And what's the difference? Um, because this is a question I get asked a lot and I admit it's confusing. And it's not helped by the fact that different email service providers talk about these things in different ways. So I'm going to talk about the generic, um, pretty much what most people refer to these terms as, but sometimes they are interchangeable. So the way I like to think of these terms is as a hierarchy. So lists are at the top and tags are at the bottom. So this is about, okay, at the top is your broadest definition of your audience or your contacts or your subscribers. Then your segments are groups within that and then the tags are more specific to individual subscribers. So it's kind of, they get narrower as they go down. So a list, I think the best practice for a list or an audience, if you're with MailChimp, just to confuse us, is to have that as large groups of people that you'll be likely emailing the same thing. So I like to label this as like a group of customers or people that are interested in certain things. Basically, a group of people that you're going to be emailing the same thing. I wouldn't want to send a newsletter out to multiple lists at one time, for example. I want a one newsletter going to one particular list. Um, so a classic example could be customers versus prospects as a very simple way of differentiating um, people in different lists, but they can be um, for all sorts of different scenarios. So that's your broadest level. Then segments are dynamic. So segments are groups of subscribers that could be within one list or in some systems across multiple lists that identify groups of subscribers based on common characteristics. And these change as information about the subscriber changes. So the first way you, um, segments could be um, created is by custom fields. So for example, if you have a field identifying on which region they are in, you can create a segment for each region. Another one is your tags. So yes, we'll talk about tags more in a moment, but tags are an identifying label. And if you said, okay, I can create a segment of people with one tag or a segment of people with a few different tags. So you can use the tags to create segments. You can also have segments that are based around the activity that your subscribers engage in. So if they open particular emails or clicked on particular emails or have been um, the most highly engaged or least engaged people on your list, there is a huge plethora of different segments you can create and they do differ um, by, uh, by email system. But, you know, these are the common ones that you will see around the place. So that's a segment. And then a tag is really specific. The way I like to think about a tag is like a little label that you put on your subscribers. And you could put it on one subscriber or you could put it on all of them. It doesn't matter. But I like to think of them as little labels that could tell you different trends, different information, and that you can use to create segments or to create lists or to trigger certain emails. Um, so classic examples of tags could be they've purchased certain um, product categories, they're interested in certain topics, they signed up for particular opt-ins and different tools like that just so you can identify your groups of subscribers. So hopefully that helps you. If you think about it broader, narrower um, between the three, and think about tags as labels, segments as dynamic pieces of content based on tags or fields or actions, and then lists as your broadest levels um, that you might be emailing certain groups.